the name of Jesus. Amen. Judge not, he says, that you not be judged, for with the judgment you pronounced you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. I watched too many reruns of the Andy Griffith show growing up. So of course this admonition of our Lord Jesus naturally brings to mind Deputy Barney Fife. In one episode, Deputy Fife was so zealous to enforce the law, he ticketed Gomer Pyle for making a U-turn in his truck. He lectured Gomer, acted as judge and jury, and gave him the ticket with pride for doing his job as a law enforcement officer. But after giving the ticket, Barney promptly gets in his car, his squad car, and makes the very same U-turn right in front of Gomer and the whole town. Gomer runs across the street, memorably yelping with great delight, citizens arrest, citizens arrest. Eventually, Andy made Barney write himself his own ticket <laughs> to avoid a riot. The measure you give out will be the measure you get. Barney was so busy picking out Gomer's splinter, he didn't realize he was carrying around a large redwood tree of his own making. Now, the Lord Jesus in his sermon is not talking about people who are rightly commissioned by God to judge according to his holy law. The fourth commandment teaches us that honoring God means honoring and obeying parents and other authorities and other offices derived from the office of parent. So parents are right to hold their children accountable to the Ten Commandments and to punish their children for misbehavior and impenitent sin, for children must learn right from wrong for their own good. Or our deputy sheriff, even an overzealous one, is right by the letter of the law to ticket an illegal U-turn, and indeed has been given the duty to do so, and is right to bear the sword on even worse crimes than U-turns. He's just not above the law himself. Pastors are called to hold their parishioners accountable to the Ten Commandments, and to call to account and condemn manifest or public impenitent sin, and anyone who holds to false doctrine publicly. Therefore, some are called or given in their vocations the commission by God with his authority to judge and condemn by the law of God for good order in family, community, society, and in the church. Jesus in Matthew 7, when he says, judge not, is talking about a spiritually deficient judging born of the old Adam in each of us, where we judge and condemn the sins and faults of the neighbor next to us when it is not our calling or office to do so. Instead, we are called to do something vastly different for our neighbor's sake, for our family, our friends, our fellow Christians. It is the devil's work in us to hypocritically look for various faults and mistakes and weaknesses and, yes, even sins committed by your neighbor, and so learn to see only that which is lacking in them. Because, you know, that proud Barney in all of us, it sure feels good to write a ticket for the speck in your neighbor's eye because it draws attention away from the log of wickedness that you're carrying away in your own eye. We can fool other people and ourselves and make ourselves look holy and righteous by seeking to judge and condemn our neighbor when not called to. But be warned, you will not fool God. Whoever judges will be judged, he says, by meddling into God's judgment and condemning one whom God has not condemned. You're giving God cause to do the same to you in turn. Dear Christians, 
Keep watch against pleasing your sinful flesh by condemning the faults of others to justify yourself and condemning the faults of others more harshly than your own. We all must look in the mirror of God's law and repent. God asks you to see the people God has given you in your life as gifts to you from his gracious hand. Parents, siblings, spouse, children, fellow Christians, especially your pastor and the fellow members of your congregation, warts and splinters and logs and all. And if you choose to just pick, 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 pick at their perceived weaknesses and faults and sins that they struggle with, while never humbling yourself and realizing you too have weaknesses and faults and sins that you struggle with, well, you're doing what Dr. Luther calls flattering yourself. He said, if you insist on flattering yourself and despising others, you should know that while someone else may have a speck in his eye, as far as you are concerned, by comparison, you have a log in your eye as far as God is concerned. What are we to do? First, Christ is Lord of all. The resurrected and ascended Lord has been given all things. All things have been put under his feet. We're going to sing here in just a moment. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. And he is a merciful judge. And numbered with his saints, he will judge us wholly on his account at the last. And he will judge our neighbor, our fellow saints, as well in the same way. Second, we hear the words of St. Paul. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. To fulfill the law of Christ to love your neighbor as you love yourself, to love God with your whole heart, soul, strength, and mind. It's to restore your neighbor in a spirit of gentleness, to seek to help your neighbor in their needs with gentle candor, humility, and grace, not ignoring sin, but that both you and your neighbor might learn to practice your baptism by daily repentance and seeking forgiveness from each other when you've hurt each other, and from the Lord. Use your strength to bear up your neighbor in his weaknesses. Use your piety and honor to cover up his sin and conceal his shame that he struggles with. No gossiping. For this is what God through Christ has done for you and still does for you every day. For from his rich bounty, Jesus gave his body, soul, and all he has unto the judgment and condemnation of the cross to not only cover over but to bear away your burdens and atone for your sins, shame, weaknesses, and faults, the splinters, the logs, all of it, and those of your neighbor. Your judgment and condemnation has been dealt with at the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus, and it rings out a verdict, not guilty. God grant us by his Holy Spirit the strength and the patience to so love and forgive and seek the best for our every neighbor, even as Christ has first done so for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.